And here we go. Uh, this is Flash Somebody at the Dropping a Coil Show on the RealLibertyMedia.com. And tonight with Larry Woods and Rob Works, we are going to define who exactly owns the color blue. But uh, you ha- can you hear me there, Grimner? Did we make it to the uh, sound wave world? I don't know. I would take a guess and say, yeah, thanks, Grim, for the place to play. And for your chatting extravaganza tonight, we have in the chat room for you, Barman Beetle, Grimner Moose Girl, Kate anti Asmo. Oh, okay, thanks, Grim. And Chloe, Charles Sidney, Sir Chloe, hello, honey. Chloe again, Dan Van Meter, me. Brumpy work, Gramsy, Grams, hey, Grams is around. Jay's Nines, Jay's Meisterbrow, Prince, Rob Work, that's the bubbler. Hear him? He's the bubbler. Plus, no one. Uh, Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, CC66, <laughs> Cyborg Noodle, Endosiv, Frumpy Matt. WJ2002, Mr. Snick. Hey, somebody jumped on. Hey, Larry jumped on the chat room. Uh, Ponsas Kawazimoto underscore Salt Lake City Mike, who ought to update his name. He's not there no more. Uh, Smart Ass and the Holiest Roger. So if you got questions for Larry or Rob or you want to uh, say something in, in super intelligent, we have the chat room available for your typing needs. So who's starting tonight? One of you guys got a, something to kick off with? And uh, Wait, I called the show tonight. It's a cruel world indeed. Take indeed. it away, guys. Indeed. After what you just said, I can't talk today. Sorry. Okay, I guess. That's <laughs> uh, <so>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> See you next week, everybody. Thanks for listening. <laughs> well, we could do the show really backward and start out with a fishing report. That yep. would make you feel better, Larry. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'll go fishing for a while. Uh oh. <laughs> got, got to go by myself. Uh Sunday. <laughs> it it was wonderful. Yeah. Uh I caught six. Uh, the wind was blowing out of the north, so in my mind, it was supposed to be a really bad day. Uh, the biggest one was between three and four pounds, closer to three than four. And the littlest one was barely the length of my hand. So <laughs> it, it was a mixed day. Okay. All yeah. Uh, but, but it was fun. It cool. was fun. When the, when the wind got up about 10.30, I... Pulled back into shore and left. I just like going out. It's there. like an easy day out on the lake. Yep. Yep. Nice. You have fans, Larry. I have who? You have a fan? Just chanting your name in the chat room. Larry, Larry, Larry. <laughs> who is it? Donna. Oh, hi, Donna. <laughs> like Donna. Yeah. Donna's a nice lady. She is a sweetheart. <laughs> Till you piss her off. Yeah. <laughs> well, and these aren't they all? Yeah, that's the truth. Aren't we all? Yeah. Hey, what's this we stuff, buddy? Yeah, shut up. I'm under contract. <laughs> And uh, I don't disclose all the finer details. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mr. Nice Guy, too. You get me riled up. Oh, aren't we all? Please. Sure. I don't have an enemy in the world except on the Internet. <laughs> really? Where? I abs- nobody in physical life. In fact, today, we have a neighbor five houses up the road, and, and they've got two kids, a couple, and two children, and two dogs. And they need a bigger house because their kids are growing up. And I run into this guy, and he is huge. He must be close to seven feet. And uh, when I shook his hand goodbye, I I thought I'd got it stuck in a door. (laughs) 
I'm just just the size of it. He doesn't know his own strength. I mean, my God, he's a gorilla. I mean, he didn't hurt me, but I mean, I felt like, holy fuck, if he squeezes, I'm, I'm going to cry like a little child. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so and I'm, I'm interacting with these, you know, big, tall, tattooed, crazy looking people on the main street all the time in front of the stores. <laughs> people have gotten familiar. I've, I'm part of that, that group, you know. Yeah. The, the one of a kind. I think that's more how you would. If you'd group us together, you would never know what the common link was. Except but we're all breathing air. Yeah. The group of unique people. <laughs> yeah, and there's. I, I'm lucky to be amongst that right now. Yeah. I was uh, hearing some terrible things about my uh, fellows back in the old uh, fatherland, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You don't sound too pleased about being in Arkansas anymore there, Toto. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's everywhere. People suck. Yes. But then in some cases, that's a good thing. Dupes and dipshits. All the sheep, just think. When all this is over with and nobody needs to wear a mask or has to wear a mask or is supposed to wear a mask anymore, about 50% of them sheep are still going to wear their stupid mask. Yeah. You really think they're going to live that long to where it's going to matter? I think the illness is that the, between all the negative and the lockdowns and the crap input, and if you already feel that badly, then where do you have to go besides further down? It's a it's a loser game to play. Yeah, this this fear. I've been afraid. Okay, I was in the war. I was afraid. And fear is a physical thing that grabs hold of your spine. And the more afraid you are, the harder it squeezes. And people are being locked down. They're they're getting snatched hold of so tight that they can't do anything. They can no longer think. All they can do is sit there and shake in fear. That ain't no way to live your life. If you're going to die, you're going to die. Period. You have no way to stop that. When it's your time, you're going to go. So, you know, don't live like you're going to go in the next 30 seconds. Yeah. Well, sorry, I'll shut up. I, no, Larry. No, I, don't. I don't disagree with you. I just feel really guilty because I'm the only one that ever brags about how good shit is on the radio anymore. Everybody else is complaining. Yeah. I'm telling me all these horrible stories. Well, I don't. I I don't mean individually everybody. I mean the the group yeah. where there's masses. Yeah. Where there's big pop here in Denmark. <coughs> Copenhagen is just fucking up really bad over this COVID crap again. Yeah. But the smaller places don't want to play. Anywhere there's um, large groups of people. Yeah, but where there's smaller communities, they're, they're starting to go, no, let's not do this. Yeah. But, again, we depend on the traffic from, you know, people commuting in and out of Copenhagen here. So. Oh, okay. Okay, let's look at it a little bit scientifically, and, and I'm not much of a scientist, but people in the big cities... They don't have dirt. Okay, they got concrete and they got asphalt and they got big steel buildings, but they don't have dirt. So they don't build up and, and they don't go out in the country mostly. So they don't build up an immunity like the folks that farm and inhale all the crop dust and all the pollens from all the different plants and all the things that you get when you're in nature. And they tune themselves to, to the earth by walking on the earth. So that that's why in your big cities, the folks get sick easy. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't like a big city. Uh, George Carlin would argue with you on that one. <laughs> his well, his immune system was tempered in raw shit. Yeah, but I've got a serious <laughs> question for you, Larry. That one. Yeah. I <laughs> well, I'm the one that likes the joke too. <laughs> anyway, uh, does 
because I do this, so I'm asking for your input. Does an hour a day of walking outside, does that really change the overall that much? You know what I mean? And as opposed to not walking the hour every day. Walking is might. wonderful, and being outside is wonderful, but if you're not barefoot or sitting your butt on the ground, then you don't retune yourself. It's too cold in the wintertime here for that. Yeah. I'm not that brave. Yeah, that, that's, that's why folks don't go out much, or, you know, the no, weather. In the, or, but yeah. in the wintertime, I, I uh, acclimated, or whatever. I go to the grocery every day, sometimes every other day. It depends on how bad things are. Yeah. But that you know, it takes an hour, hour, a little over, something like that. So I'm thinking, well, that's some kind of getting up and getting out and being physical. Yeah, that's good for you. That's really good for you. Just but as little as an hour a day, does that really make, because that's yes. all I'm going to really put out there. Absolutely, that yeah. That's all you need. And then put this way, an hour is better than no hour. Yeah, <laughs> well, one, one of the chatters was bringing up they're going to start running again. And I grew up a swimmer, and I thought running was for crazy people that didn't know about water. Yeah. Yeah. I would prefer, I do prefer swimming or running. Yeah, because the, the pounding you put on your knees. Yeah, running's rough on your body, and swimming uh, exercises more muscles. Yeah. Well, yeah, until I was uh, about 40 or 45 or so, I stopped working real, you know, regular kind of physical shit. I was pretty solid, and now I'm older. Now I've softened up a little bit. But it, even at my size, when people would bump into me, I wouldn't move. It didn't, you know, they had to, they'd go, wow, damn. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. that was a long time ago. But now I'm old and flimsy, you know. Now when people bump into me, they say they're sorry for hitting me because I'm an old guy. We're not going to tear that old guy up. Oh, no. <laughs> You, you gotta watch out for them old guys. No, nothing like that. I, I'm just talking about like being in the bar or the grocery store where there's crowd. You know, you can't. It's a smaller place. These buildings are everything about this this uh, lifestyle is smaller. Yeah, you need to ground your wire. And we don't have. <laughs> yeah, we don't have. That. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> well, like yeah, you could do that. Drag a wire along behind you. <clears throat> Why? Hold, hold on to it with your hand. That'll ground you. That'll that'll do the same as taking your shoes off. Really? The earth will instill a frequency the into that. No, the earth will in, instill a frequency into that mm -hmm. conductor, with it, no matter what kind of wire it is, yes. what kind of metal it is, and that frequency will go through that conductor into your body through your hand. Yeah. On even on concrete. Not on Maybe. concrete. Okay, no. you got to be on the grass, right? Uh, yeah, on okay. real dirt. Right. Oh, earth. Yeah. Right. Okay, I've got yeah. the yard. Yeah. Yeah. We, we don't. This is planet Earth, not planet asphalt. Okay. Is there a particular like? If there was a piece of wire, what would you, would you prefer a certain wire over another, or you just use anything? Copper, steel, didn't matter. I I would prefer copper. But absolutely any piece of metal Conductive. will convey that frequency. Okay. All right. So if I had a damn broom handle made out of some kind of cheap whatever metal they make it out of. Yeah. Wow, because they've got metal ones. That's the one that scrape off the paint. Oh, or you're going to hold yeah. on to it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try that. Actually, actually for changing your frequency, that doesn't matter. But you're going to be generating a small electrical charge as well. And that's why you scrape off the paint so that you absorb that charge. Now, is there any kind of physical, like, reaction you'll notice? Or is it just something that would just feel like you're just dragging a stick? Big deal. Yeah, you'll be just dragging a stick. You won't, you won't feel anything. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be like, oh... Yeah, hey, I'm doing it. You're not going to feel it. Do now, do? if you really want to get fancy, you could get you a copper rod, a uh, ground rod from the hardware store, drive it into the ground, run a wire off of that onto a copper sheet, uh -huh. 
and lay down on that thing naked. Yeah. If you really want to get uh, serious about it. Yeah. I, absolutely. That is, that would be the best thing that you could ever come up with. All right. And what kind of results would you expect this to give you if you would have followed the directions Rob just gave us? Okay. You're being bombarded with 440 frequency right now, which is not harmonious with the earth. It's not harmonious within the human frequencies. It ain't harmonious with nothing. So Specifically your body. Yeah. And once your body is retuned to the, to the earth frequencies, then all of your organs begin to function like they're supposed to rather than being out of sync. The, we're a motor. We're a fine-tuned motor. And if you put the right fuel in us, we can do wonderful things. But if you're out of timing, which is what frequency is, that motor don't run worth a hoot. Yeah, you got all sputters and backfires and just Sounds like me. I got sputters and backfires. <laughs> well, Grim just made a comment about... Uh, he said, uh, da, 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 when I lost it. Uh, 432 hertz for the wind. Yeah, for the wind. Yeah, I thought it was higher. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, it just brings me back to if we have the ability to change these things in our own environment, are they available to us to, to control the, uh, the 432 to create it, to the HC? You know what I mean? Or am I not getting this one across. Yeah, we can create it. That's that's the whole point of the credit system. <laughs> okay, but yeah. I'm getting my I'm getting my internet service delivered to me, right? Yeah. And it it's on four forty, correct? Mm hmm. So how do I, as the guy that's sitting here in my chair, how do I make it into four thirty two and eliminate the Nazis? You would have to put your entire electrical system on the frequency generator, a frequency modulator, excuse me, which is basically a rheostat. What you need to do is get everybody together and go to the power company and say, look, we're all going to unplug for a week if you do not change the frequency to 432. That's a matter of them turning one dial at the power company, one dial per generator. Yeah. They're all frequency modulated because those generators spin up a whole lot faster than 432 times a second. Yeah, but all the protesters are kind of tied up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're, they are got another project they're working on. Right. Nobody knows yeah. what it is. <laughs> but really? They show up every fucking day and they're protesting. <laughs> Remember... Remember I complained at Mary about that, that two million people gathered for a World Series win? Yeah. And through that, nobody said a goddamn thing worth remembering. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but there was no violence. Uh, yeah, but they could have legalized <laughs> weed that day. Two million people gathered together. And when they get those kind of groups, all they do is they bomb each other, call each other bad names. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. Throw rocks we live other. amongst idiots, Rob. I mean, what the fuck? Tell me about it. I've been screaming yeah. it for 30 fucking years. Yeah, but they call they call us bad names, Rob. Yeah, we, we're conspiracy theorists. We don't drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if your indoctrination teaches you to believe that, whenever somebody comes to you with an alternative... That there's you know there's something wrong with that person. Well, then that's how how you're going to grow up and behave as an adult. Wow. I got raised by people that kind of taught me to make up your own fucking mind. Don't depend on me to tell you what it is. What am I, father? <laughs> oh, it's a joke. Did I mute? <laughs> help, help, I'm alone. No, I didn't. I chased Rob off. No. no we just left. Moose, well, well, you did good. Go to another yep. sweat lodge every time you get a chance. Go and got it. Go. Uh, 
that that brings <laughs> up a good point. A, a sweat lodge or, or a sauna, whatever, you can sweat out the toxins in your body. Uh, if the way that you do it, the way most Indians do it, you purify your body with three days of fasting before you go into the sweat lodge, and then your body will literally kick out all of the impurities. Uh, it's one of the best things that you can do for yourself, as well as going outside and walking barefoot. And you can do that a lot. And when you live in cold, cold extremes, then what do you do? Then you wear something that's got leather soles rather than rubber soles. That way you maintain contact with the earth. Oh my! Really? Just like, yeah, just like your skin was thicker. That's the only difference. But the rubber insulates you from that and absorbs the frequency. Mm -hmm. Right. So all the see all these little subtle things that have been done for the sake of uh, convenience and price and all that horse shit. All they turned out to be is ways to slow us down so we can not progress. Yeah, keep you stupid. That's what 440 does. It makes you agitated. It makes you mad all the time. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh is that what it is? Stupid, sir. I know. You know, there's people on, on the chat rooms that I engage in, and some of them people call me bad names because I don't comply with the social order. <sighs> Do you comply with the social order, Larry? Hmm? Yeah. I'm, I be what I'm going to be all the time. I am the same all the time. And none of this crap is affecting me in the very least. They, they, they give me a mask at the, at the restaurant. I lay it on the table. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. It's well, pretty... You know, it's, it, well... I've been pretty upset about what I saw coming out of uh, Australia on the internet. Well, yeah, that's getting bad down there. Wow. Well, okay. Now, here, here's the question that I have, being as I came into the internet, internet later. I didn't start it out. Start out when it was new, right? Yeah. So, to me, it's, it's now I'm starting to get to the point where I wonder if this isn't the government producing a show for us to see so that people will be afraid. <laughs> or is it real? I mean, wow, what a position to be in in the 20th century. You hear me say it all the time. It's a hell of a show. Was that you? Yeah. Oh, I had you confused with my imaginary friend Hansel. I thought it was Hans that said that. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> Well, come on. It's a, it's a radio show. <laughs> if, I, if I don't make you laugh or at least laugh at you, what's the point? You're, you're doing it wrong. I must be. Well, you're a tough fucker anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, Tuesday, I did, I did a, a solo. I finally went. I ditched it for two weeks. I couldn't think of anything that wasn't negative for two weeks. It was terrible. But now, mm -hmm. this week... I was talking about my version of censorship, and I just thought maybe it would be kind of cool to hear you guys' version of how you think censorship is and how you how you cope with it. Because I already did it, so you know, if you heard it, you heard it, and if you didn't, eh. Yeah. But uh, I heard you or Rob talk about it. No, um, I, uh, well... I think everybody knows my position pretty much. Nothing that comes out on the TV is believable. So, uh, my default position is if it's coming from the government, it's bullshit until proven otherwise. I agree. Damn, that's three of us. Uh-oh. Hey, we just formed a herd. Damn it. I'm starting to I'm starting to panic. Well, when uh, you all uh, agree about something, isn't that like that uh, thing? Well, you have to wear all, you have to wear the bell. All. You you have to wear the bell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> wow. You wear the bell. <laughs> they always shoot at the guy with the bell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
course, I'd probably be a little harder to hit than your average bear. But what, what I was getting at is you recognize censorship in life, and, and there's you know obviously things that you feel are censored, but how do you cope with things that are censored? Do you watch them anyway just because they're fucking censored? Does, what does that mean? Yeah. If I hear about something that's censored or blacklisted or banned or whatever, that just makes me want to look at it. Yep, me too. It makes me believe. Yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll make me want to go out and dig it up somewhere uh, because YouTube banned it or whoever. Uh, every, every time they fact check me, I, I go back to what I did and that just meant that it was right. Oh yeah, that's right. Because you put out the scientific information, so you're gonna, you're always gonna get people that are gonna challenge you. But I thought that's what you wanted. I do, I do. But I don't want Facebook telling me, telling everybody, oh, don't believe this bullshit. But they've they got every work. right, every right to do that, don't they? No, they don't, because it's supposed to be an open forum. It's okay, not open. Well, but see, freedom of speech, Larry, does not indicate you're telling the truth. It just means you're free to say it. That's right. So if, if you're free to say it, then isn't somebody else just as free to stop you from saying it? They're yeah, free to that mean I don't get pissed off about it. Oh, that part. <laughs> yeah. Well, here, here's the bottom line. The, the, those, those companies, YouTube, Facebook, Google, are all quote unquote privately held companies, and therefore they are not uh, under any obligation to honor free speech or anything else under the under the the con. Um, yep. So um, it comes back to uh, just like in the RLM chat, like I tell Grim, this is this is like your virtual living room, um, and you have a right to dictate and regulate what goes on in your own fucking living room. And it's not uh, any kind of violation of freedom of speech or anything else to shut a fucking idiot up and, or kick him completely out of the fucking room. Yep. That's my position. Wow. Aren't you a little extreme there, mister? I, uh, you know, it's your living room. What do you, you know... Are you going to let a bunch of crackheads come and hang out in your fucking living room and tear your fucking house up? Just because, oh, uh, it's freedom of speech or association or what the fuck ever you want to call it? Yeah, but the, the internet in itself does not really compare with the, the physical world in, in that respect. Because I can ignore people with a button click and a few, uh, few line of text. Boom, well, they're gone. True, true. I, and I, I get that. And, and I don't have a problem. Here's, and and you've, you've seen it if you've watched and paid attention. You've seen what my position is in the chat room. I don't care what the fuck anybody says. But when people start leaving because of your annoying bullshit, uh, that, that's when it starts affecting other people, Okay. Yeah. That's when it starts. I mean, and it's happened. That's the whole thing we went through with uh, certain people in the chat room. So um, others, others I can ignore, and it's fine because other people talk to them, get along with them, or whatever. That's your choice. Um, but you know, as long as people aren't leaving because you are making such an ass of yourself, like Goober did. Uh, Oh yeah. yeah, you know, you know, or be, you know, getting drunk, being stupid. Um, yeah. it, I wasn't speaking about Vinny uh, Graham, but um, <laughs> where does it say to think about Vinny? Graham has said you oh, can say Vinny's yeah. name, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, there she goes. Um, anyway, <laughs> sock puppet. Wow. But anyway, uh, you know, uh, it happened with Beth D. It, it happened with uh, Juan Otaco. It happened, you know, it's happened, happened. A lot of people have left 
Um, I, I thought Mike was going to leave there for a little while because of the bullshit, but I think he figured out how to get over that. So, um, you know, because I, I I appreciate Mark's input. He's he's very intelligent and he he studies things. You know, intelligent stuff. Um, yeah, but whenever you voice a strong opinion uh, in a room full of people... Oh, yeah, you're going to piss somebody off. <laughs> somebody's going to call you stupid. Yeah. That's the way it is. I got my own personal guy to call me that. Yeah. Just one. Yeah. Everybody else yeah, is on I it. Don't, I don't... I don't <laughs> you can call me anything you want. I don't give a shit. I really I don't. I can't read it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just... I just want my fan club. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not here for the uh, for that. Well, I call. Not, a, I'm not here for anybody's approval or anything else. I'm here uh, to, to speak my truth as I see it. Yeah. Try to share information. Try to help people as much as I can. Uh, you know, um, I'm, I try to be helpful if people have any kind of things that they need help with. Uh, if I have knowledge to share about it, um, so and that's that's just the way I am about life. Well, I was just struck by all the censorship involved with this COVID stuff, and some. And, and what's really bizarre to me about the whole thing is, it's a global pandemic, yet everybody's dealing with it differently. <laughs> Well, yeah, and then you look at Sweden, and, <laughs> and uh, they didn't do anything, and they're, it's over there. It's, the, the curve is gone. Yeah, the Danes are taking shit from the population, the Danish government, for, yeah. hey, how come Sweden's fucking doing better than we are? What the hell's going yeah. on? Yeah, and they didn't lock down or do mass or none of that shit. No, but it goes to prove that it's nothing more than a political stand. It's a power grab. Nothing to do with any fucking virus. We've been screwed. It's, it's all about power, conditioning, and control. Okay, but they use censorship or the or the threat of it to to uh, control their own herd. Well, yeah, they don't want you hearing about how there's only you know less than one percent of the people by. <laughs> they, you know, they don't want you hearing. Oh, speaking of censorship, there's a funny thing that just happened. It's been posted in the chat a couple times already about uh, uh, how uh, somebody was interviewing on Fox and started to say something about how George Soros is funding all the BLM and all that bullshit, and they shut that shit down quick. <laughs> Did you see that? No, I'm in Denmark, uh, Rob. <laughs> Well, I, uh, I assume you pay attention to some of the chat. Oh, the ch uh, yeah, but see, I'm I'm up and about in the worst times. Let me uh, where there's very either let there's me nothing going on, <laughs> or everybody's asleep. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Time zone ahead of you a little bit. Yeah, and the point is, is you know, Fox is supposed to be the anti-left. Uh, or, or the right leaning uh, news organization. <laughs> but they just censored this guy from talking about George Soros and how he's behind financing all the. I think they were talking about all the. Uh, all the. Uh, uh, Marxist. Uh, attorney generals, I think, is the one. He was. <laughs> he's, he's putting millions into, you know, political campaigns and of affecting the outcome of the elections. Oh, uh, they're afraid you George know. Soros will buy them and fire everybody. Yeah. yeah. It just sounds like more bullshit to distract to me than anything. There's nothing realistic to me about government. It's all fantasy. Right, Which right. Yeah. stories on the Internet. Shit, I've never seen you know, even when it comes down to, like, the Germans were supposed to be rebelling against the COVID lockdown. You see it. They're, uh, like, uh, it's 100, 100, about 100 miles to the German border. But yet, I don't I don't feel any of that German stuff over here. Okay. Hell, I don't even feel any of the Copenhagen stuff where I'm at. Yeah. So, uh, it, I'm stuck on this belief that 
as long as you're in a small community where you know people and you've known some of them for a period of time, oh, it, is. Soft, it softens this whole anonymous, they're going to get me sick and I'm going to die story. You know, with the masks and the hand sanitizer and the distancing shit. No. But what, what the smart people in the, in the opposition are doing is they're using fake numbers and they're claiming, see, the COVID is not attacking you because you're doing these things we told you to do. Yeah, right. Not, not it's a hoax and there's nothing to be afraid of. Sorry, we were, we were just fucking mm-hmm. around. No, no, no. We don't get that. Just one apology from a government would probably give me a stroke at my age. <laughs> if they did it, they'd wipe us all out, huh? What do you think, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah, I heard you snickering. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Let them come. So I posted that link. Uh, it was Newt Gingrich. Um, okay, yeah. On Fox, talking about uh, George Soros. Uh, the problem in these cities is George Soros elected left-wing anti-police pro-criminal district attorney who refuse to keep these criminals locked up, which we've heard several stories about how, you know, they're just turning these, these violent criminals loose on the streets um, for whatever excuse, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, the no-bail release crap is dead. If you get busted, you got to go to jail. And, you know, that's the way they do it for everybody else. Let's not make special rules for yeah. people that don't follow yeah. the law. People who hear me talk about cops will think I'm, I'm anti-law enforcement. But I'm not really. I'm actually much harsher against crime than, <laughs> than uh, the system itself. The problem is, is that, you know, real crimes aren't being punished um, enough to be a deterrent. Mm-hmm. And non-crimes, victimless crimes, are being focused on. And yeah. so we've got jails full of people that, you know, had a plant or were, you know, smoking something or uh, had a couple drinks before they went home, you know. But they haven't hurt anybody. They haven't caused any damage or harm to anyone. Yep. And the ones that are out there raping children and, you know, robbing people and beating people up, you know, they're in there for a few months and they're out again. Or they don't even do any jail time. They get out on probation. Because they make more money that way. When you get on probation, you have to pay a fee every month to those probation people. They pay for it. It's job security. And go to all kinds of expensive classes. Yeah, yeah, it's a racket. It's all a racket. It's all connected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he snuck that in, Grim. <laughs> I love it. I like Grim show. Grim and Sir Grim. They'll be glad to hear that. Yeah, it's a good show and it's a good concept. I mean, because it's true. I mean, everything is. It's all tied together. Everything you do, top to bottom, it's all corrupt as fuck. Yep. Uh, then I'm going to call it a study and tell people it's true. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, well, another study out there. Okay, how in the fuck did we get from where we were, say, 110 years ago to the point we are collectively now? It is unimaginable. We allowed the bankers to take over our money system. Yep. Okay, well, how come they didn't get me to uh, join their evil prison gang? Because you're not in the family. Oh, damn. Oh, well. And I got this nose and this circumcision for nothing. You <laughs> rip. <laughs> what a ripoff. Yeah, it's not enough just to be a dude. You got to be in the right family. Oh well, yeah. Plus the right synagogues and the history. You know, you have yeah, to, you yeah. Know, it's not what you know too. You know that. Uh, what do they call it? Not traditional, but uh, orthodox. Or that? Yeah, you know your religion, religion nutter. <laughs> I have studied. Whenever, you. Oh yeah, what were you like a Catholic hostage for twelve years? Uh, no, uh, Protestant. 
Presbyterian, Baptist. I don't know. It all sounds like the same malarkey to me. It's all religion, I mean. I like the way Beetle puts it. So, I'd, if that was the truth, I'd believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> and, and, he's ne- and he's he's never shy about it. Just ask him. <laughs> yeah. Beetle has an opinion or two. I don't even think he's with us tonight. Hey. Yeah, he hasn't. Work. He hasn't been. Uh, he's uh, he's out doing estimates today. I think he said, um, yeah, well, or sometimes. doing job proposals or something. I usually catch him in the when I'm up. He's just getting up, and I'm getting ready to go out and do stuff. Yeah. So I, I get a minute to chat with him sometimes. He's a funny character. Yeah. He he's, makes me. He's cool. Smile. He's good people. So. What are you going to do about the curfews? What or curfews? do you not have them where you are? We don't have curfews. We don't even have mandatory masks in public. It's just indoors in restaurants and stuff like that. And most of the people who I mean, uh, just ignore it. Uh, <laughs> uh, your bigger box stores are going to be, you know, your corporate stuff, is they're going to be sticklers. You know, your Walmart and Kroger's and those kind of places. But all your little shops and stuff, they don't give a fuck. Ooh, I got mad today when I was on my wander. Yeah. I was headed out to go out and drink some alcohol at the local tavern. And on my way, you know what I looked down on the ground and saw? A mask. A mask. Two of them. Two of them. Yeah, on the same walk. I about... Well... You know, they're they're supposedly covered in this deadly freaking virus. When you when you up. saw that, did it did it piss you off more than seeing like say a, a beer can or or a, or a yeah or yeah a, because the beer cans are left out for people to pick them up. So they okay, can well let me let me say a, a, a McDonald's bag. How about that? It's about the same. You disgusting fuck. You couldn't put it in the trash. The, yeah, that yeah. mentality towards it's the same but, shit. But but see, this is how seriously people are taking this fucking thing. It, they're not. It, no, they it's it a fad. It's a fad. They all jumped on board. It's like they're, they're a bunch of fanboys. They, they started. They started this fad and got it going. Of course, they, they put some mandatory shit behind it, but uh, it's. Yeah, yeah, they it's they made it into a fad, and now you know it's a fashion statement. They got all these. Uh, there's <laughs> one people are selling a fucking mask for a thousand dollars or some stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you, you fucking you moron! I'd like to go stand there and watch these people come out with these masks on and just laugh at and pouring at them and call them fucking morons. <laughs> hey, you know what? My last indication that the money was gone, all of it, it's all gone. And that was the day I realized they are allowing people to go into functioning banks wearing masks. In fact, they're insisting on it. Yeah. Well, there's nothing left to steal. It's all gone. You're, you're gone. Yeah, yeah, there's no money in the bank. They don't have any money there to speak of. Maybe 20 grand at any given time. I don't know about how much they keep on hand, but what I'm saying is in the overall, it's, it's collapsed. It's over. And all these little things that they allow you to do <laughs> are sm- they're, they're kind of laughing at us because if you couldn't do this a year ago because you might get arrested for being a thief, well, how come you can do it now? And if you don't do that now, you could be arrested for being a booger snot <laughs> on public. Yeah, you could yeah. do it on grandma and you. Yeah, you granny care. Well, how... How does this set with a whole society is okay with these complete 180 turns? And what? Just the other day, we were being told, don't do this. And now we're being told, if you don't do this, we're going to punish you. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, I would assume there'd be bank robberies up the fucking wazoo. Yeah, it's like a license to steal, right? It, in a sense, isn't it? Yeah. They're defunding police. Who are they going to call? Right. All the hell's angels. They'll come and protect you for ten percent. Just have a bunch of people, a bunch of friends, go over and walk into Walmart with no masks on and get all the cops over there. Yeah, and then chasing chasing the no maskers down. (laughs) See, 
Uh, well, besides that, I mean, today yeah. a criminal has no imagination, you know. If I was a criminal mind in America right now, I would steal a dump truck. I would back that dump truck into a, gu a gun store, and I would take everything that wasn't bolted down. <laughs> and, and here these people are. They collect in the hundreds, and they burn a store to the ground and steal TV sets. Yeah. Wow, that's going to really help in the famine, I'm telling you. I yeah, well, oh, they're idiots. Yeah, yeah let's, let's go steal the fucking, the worst weapon on the planet uh, to, to, to look at it <laughs> <laughs> and get ourselves programmed more. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> but uh, they, can watch, they can watch little girls. Here, have some fluoridated uh, water. Uh, have, uh, have some fluoridated uh, water while you're at it. I, I wonder if that doesn't ignite some of these social disorders that they accuse people of having. And they're probably a result of watching this shit on idiot box programs and taking it beyond entertainment into, wow, this is real. <laughs> Come on, it's a movie, you know. And, and it, it usually starts, the, the ones they'll comment back about it, the scary ones. Oh, that's scary or violent. Oh, I can't look at that. Okay. Well, you did look at it. <laughs> it's, a, it's too late. You've been corrupted. Uh, and people that let their 12-year-old girls dress like sluts and wonder why they're pregnant at 14. Ouch. That's a strong thing to say. Well, you know what, does it really, but still, I remember being 14 and 14, 12, 14, <laughs> not, not a lot of development was finished in those tender years. So I think, wow, what a, what kind of weirdo is attracted to a 12-year-old girl? When I was 12-year-old boy, it was like, they're, they're like boys still. They're, they weren't quite girls. You know what I mean or not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's been a long life. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but when it was about 14, then all of a sudden, hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and then as a father of two girls over my lifetime, I also have this outlook about, well, that could be my daughter. You know, no, it, not that it could be mine, but uh, the idea, just not that it could be, but the idea that it could be is enough. Yeah. That's, the, of that's, female. that's the same as, as my daughter, and that daughter has a dad out there, and I'm sure he feels the same way I do. <laughs> but see, society, it pushes us into behaving, to responding to certain inputs. Yeah. And then when you try to tell people about it, they call you nuts, like they call Rod and Larry and me. Because <laughs> Who called me a nut? nut. <laughs> well, you know, it's besides Chloe and the Cairns. Uh, you know what? Those those people they they're, they disturb the shit because they're they're bored. If they had something better to do than disturb the shit, they'd be out doing it. That's all. And yeah. you know, we need a certain amount of that to balance out our perfection. You know, because yeah. if people didn't come along and and you know throw shit at us once in a while. We'd be perfect, so we have to have that balance. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. How's it working? <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I, I did read a story about, uh, I think it was an Indian rug maker. Maybe it was Persian. I think it was Persian. And uh, they make these fucking handmade rugs, and they're just goddamn beautiful and oh, yeah. very expensive, right? Yeah. But they say that at one spot on that rug is an imperfection put there on purpose. Absolutely. And it's the same with native yeah. beadwork, American Indian beadwork. You, only God is perfect. Everybody else makes mistakes. So in, in beadwork, there'll be one bead that's the wrong color or out one place. Color yeah. pattern that's totally out of place. Yeah. They use that for a signature, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, that's it's, their it's signature. Paying homage to a, a more intelligent being. Yeah. 
the Westerners have a real hard, hard problem with that in reality. They say it verbally, but they don't. Yeah, they it's don't. all lip service. Yeah, because they don't physically show any sign of backbone. It's all chasing groups to be a part of and belonging to them. Yeah, it's all lip service and virtue signaling. And then there's us, of course. I like to separate from the herd. <laughs> yeah. I'd be a terrible herdsman. I am blatantly anti-religion utter. Yes, <laughs> I'm anti-socialized religion. Yeah. Hmm. Yet you have an, uh, a vast knowledge of the written bits. Oh, I've studied religion. Right. Quite extensively. And I never found one that would uh, that was believable. <laughs> so well, you had to study them to figure that out. Okay. Ah, well, well, I was forced to study Christianity for all of my up until I was, I was fourteen or so I when I started leaving home. Yeah, uh, I was sarcastic you, Rob. I, I, know, I, know I know from experience that yeah, yeah. the things that you know were more than likely put to you. You didn't ask for them. Oh yeah, I was I was a fully programmed born again Christian. They at one point. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, my mom was, we talked about it the other day in the chat room how she burned my uh, Judas Priest album. After the last show, we talked about it. Uh, she burned my Judas Priest albums and my Kiss albums, and she was hardcore thumper, man. Wow. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I grew up with. Huh. Well, that explains your uh, your happiness. <laughs> Well, these, I think, you know, some people... Oh, it took a long time to get over that. It, yeah, see, and I just feel that uh, how my my history compares to somebody that claims, well, you had a, a, I had a forced childhood too, but I rebelled against it in ways that they finally gave up trying to fight me at. Yeah. You know, in the, so I wrote one real young. I should have, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't control me, but they tried really hard. But not in the religious sense, but more in the uh, structure and yeah. go to school and become something and all that. Go to school, get the girls, get a good job, work 40 years, yeah. retire. Yeah. yeah. And at 12, I had already figured out there's something wrong with that. Me. I didn't, yeah. mm -hmm. didn't know what it was for a, a few years after that, but it started to sh surface. The rebellion and yeah, get the, you can tell me what to do. Same here. Yeah, I, I knew I was being fed a line from early, early on. So, yeah, I think it was it was six, it was seventh grade. We at the, at the beginning of seventh grade history class, they started it exactly the same way they did sixth grade history class. I mean, it was exact same fucking. Of course, curriculum. I mean, same, same exact. I mean, back then I had, I had almost perfect recall. I, you know, I think I've told the story how I did in school. I'd go to school the first week of school. I'd have all the books read, okay, because I was a bookworm, and so I'd have all the books read and go into class. And, I, you know, I'd fuck off in class or not even show up. But there at the end, I was only showing up on Fridays to take their little pop quiz, and I'd ace it. And they they didn't, they thought I was cheating. Because, you know, I was never in class. I never, you know, paid attention. When I was in class, I was sleeping or drawing or doodling or whatever. <laughs> but then I'd ace the test. And I said, yeah, well... Test me again. Put me in a room by myself. Whatever, dude. You know. And yeah, well, what all that stuff taught me was it, all they want you to do is just repeat them. Exactly. They don't care about whether you're learning anything or getting any skills or knowledge. They just want you to be able to regurgitate the lines. Yeah, and in those days, in the 60s, when I was just, just late 69, 70, 71, those few years... My folks had you know, encyclopedia and an unabridged dictionary, so I had opportunity to go into books to find out, hey, what do those books say about this stuff they're telling me? Yeah. 
And sometimes there'd be two different stories about the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, well, what about this? No, we don't talk about that here. And that was, <laughs> when I was uh, 13 or 14, the last time I heard a teacher tell me, well, we don't talk about that. And I went, oh, fuck this. Then. I'm not coming here anymore. You people are fucking idiots. <laughs> and I've gone, yeah, and I've been like that ever since. You know, and, but one thing I wanted to point out, too, about memory, I once, when I was young, had a much clearer, better recall, but yeah. now I'm 60, so I've got all this shit from the last 45, 50 years on top of the... <laughs> yeah. So it, it's harder for me to recall now than it was when I was 15 or 20 or 30. Yeah. Now I find it a little difficult. I struggle. Yeah. Well, uh, things, I things get for words. Things get prioritized. And, uh, you know, inconsequential bullshit tends to get faded out real quick. <laughs> well, I know we're living in, in it. We're just stewing in this fucking ooze of bullshit. At yeah. every level of government, religion, education, anything social, yeah. it's all based on bullshit. It's inundated with, with uh, crap. And here we are, you know. Somehow or another, though, the, the people that the people that understand what we talk about, the three of us separately, they seem to know that hey, they're on to something. Yeah. It's not going to ever attract a large crowd, so don't get too crazy about it. You're going to only get so many people interested. But the ones that are, they already know what we know. There's just they're being yeah. out of the yeah, somewhat generations behind us. They're yeah. going to change laws. They'll have go in twenty years. There will be American gun laws, and the kids will have been bred out of, oh, we hate guns, because they punished them for liking guns. Yeah. Huh? Yep. It's all about wow. social engineering. When we I was growing up, twos. yeah, and people had, from their school. they had gun racks in their fucking trucks. Yeah. 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 We, we took our guns and bows during those seasons to school with us, because yeah. we were going right after school. Yeah. And, and none of us little kids said anything about it, you know, where we weren't afraid of the guns or nothing. It was like yeah. part of the, it was normal. Yeah. And then over the seventies it just slowly got illegalized. Yeah. Rules, codes, all well, this bullshit, this legal uh, argument. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what they do is they take they t they train the kids behind the parents' back, out of their control because both parents got to work now to su survive. Yeah. So the, the kids are raised by the fucking state, and then people are wondering why there's riots from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Wow, because the government made it that way. Yeah, yeah I've, made it my, I've made my opinion about schools clear for a long time. Probably can tell you. Uh, we've no, gone, I don't know. We've, we've gone. To you. No, well, no, whatever. Somebody else. I'm not but anyway, anyway, uh, she knows I've. I've Oh, I've known I've been against story. public school for as long as I can remember. Well, since I was in one. <laughs> yeah, we we're dropping a coil, though. You, you Writing it in the chat room and using the radio as a platform is different. Yeah. Because we hit an audience out there beyond RLM people. Yeah, that's true. You know, go to the bit shoot thing, and eh, 50, 100 people will pick up the show over a couple of weeks. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that means between the opinions that we sh you know either share or disagree on, then there's all all the electronic information you guys put out. Yeah. So, well, but to to think that a lot of people would be interested in what we think. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of electronic information, uh, they want a, they want a stimulus check, Rob. They want the government to save. Oh yeah, they want free stuff. So what? Uh, fuck them. Uh, that uh, um, electromagnetic uh, gardening thing I posted. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, and it, it, yeah, that will send a signal to the earth. And yes, more than likely that will stimulate the plant growth. I do the same thing, but okay, you're going to think it's weird, but I do it anyway. Uh, I, I grab a bunch of copper wire, whatever size I can get, strip mm -hmm. it bare. 
or, or at least strip the ends of it bare or good ways. And I'll wrap it around the funnel. Yeah, the yeah, you told us. Kitchen, start at the little part and wrap that booger up five, six, seven, twelve, fourteen, however many wraps. I normally do nine wraps because I'm stuck with the number nine, but however many you want to do, the more wraps you put on it, the stronger it'll be and the more area it will cover. Right. So, I pull it off the funnel, pull the funnel out of it because it'll fall right out. Yeah. And that'll, that'll leave you a long end pointing down, leave yourself about six inches there, uh-huh. and you can have a straight long end sticking up, leave yourself about six inches there. Strip all the insulation off the top and the bottom piece. Go out and stick that in the ground, point down, and put a couple of sticks around it to hold it up. Uh-huh. And there you go. Do not hook it to your metal tomato cages if you're growing tomatoes, or to any metal cages, because I did that, and within a week, my tomato plants were completely brown. So Didn't like that. No. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to put them inside the field of that basket. Okay. Uh, but other than that, it works real good. Uh, I had a much higher per, uh, uh, yield on my tomatoes and my cucumbers. My cucumbers went all over my fence and it was a, a pain in the tail to get it all out of it. I had cucumbers that were growing half on one side and half on the other side of a post hole. So, they're funny. Huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we have several gardeners in here. I'd like to like to see one of them try that and see it. Yeah, and what what that guy did is he had a bunch of, of circular magnets, ring magnets. I yeah, know. yeah. And he slid those, he taped them all together real nice, and slid them over the copper or it was galvanized steel wire that he used. Yeah. Anything that's conductive. Anything that yeah, conducts yeah. electricity will work. Any conductor, yeah. Yeah. And what that does is he probably had those magnets taped together because somewhere in there... He used beeswax. Rub- what? Beeswax. He used wax? Okay. Beeswax. Yeah, it says it right on there. Uh, somewhere, somewhere in that batch, there's a couple that's turned the wrong way. So uh-huh. he's trying to repel. And that that difference in magnetic field trying to repel and most of it trying to attract is what creates an imbalance that moves that magnetic field subatomically back and forth. Yeah, vibrates. Right. Yeah, and as that oscillates, as it vibrates, as it creates a frequency, it turns that conductor. It, it charges it electrically. Uh-huh. It's a very low amperage and low voltage charge, but it's yeah. enough to stimulate the plant growth. It's an ambient charge, yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to have buy batteries or do none of the weird stuff. No. It's, uh, just, just try it. You just install and, it and leave it there? Yeah. Uh, it needs to be six or eight inches underground. Yeah. Uh, Because you're stimulating the roots. Now, this will make the plants grow really good, and it will really stimulate the the size of the fruit. Right. So, good thing. And uh, the other thing on that one is is the orient them north to south. North to south, yeah. Yeah. You orient orient the magnets north to north, south to south. So you've got the north pole of the magnets facing north on the wire at the south end of the wire. Yeah. That's important for some reason, too. So, oh, It's very important because if you're other than north and south, that's going to make your magnetic field and the wire go funny. Yeah. It'll reduce it. And if yeah, it'll be... Magnet, if it's at an angle, it could cancel it out completely. Yeah, that's one. Uh, 
My wife is bragging. A <laughs> hundred cucumbers from two plants. Yep. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's so many of them. I've been taking them up to the bar people. Yeah. And she's just impressed as shit with Cirque's gardening abilities and <laughs> has her own. Does her own gardening. So right. not you know, it's a Danish woman, so they, yeah. they all do this shit. Yeah, but when uh, when I brought them to her, I think I told the story probably too many times. But she took it right out of the bag and yeah. uh, and munched it with no washing it off or nothing. Right, right. So this is right off the vine, out of my bag. Oh, gee, give me that. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, she was she was into the second one before she said anything again. <laughs> she was eating raw because, well, her res- her uh, results are much. They're superior to the stuff you get from the grocery. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well, that's not (laughs) hard. Yeah. That's what what people need. We need to do this for each other. Naturally grown stuff. And give it to your Mm -hmm. friends. Fuck it. Sell it and all that horse shit if you want to. Yeah, you're not going to get rich selling vegetables. But it, it, beside the point, what, you get rich giving food away to people. That exactly, you get much more wealth out of out of goodwill and then. Yeah, yeah, but especially with free garden grown vegetables. Wow, I think it, it's like an ego trip in a sense because somebody else is receiving something that you did for work and they're just giving it to you. Yeah. It's, yeah, there's a different. I'm from the city, Rob. This whole country living thing. Is yeah, I mean, there's nothing for free. No free lunches. What the fuck? Yeah, there are. That's the whole point. Is I know. That's why it's different. They're more. Uh, they're more giving. And they're not so greedy. It's so, and they've got such high taxes to pay and shit. And yeah. they say, "Oh yeah, I pay a high tax," but I've never seen her be mean to somebody about money. And yeah. She's a she's a storekeeper, but you know, yeah. if somebody was hungry or what, they would never turn anyone away over money. It, it's not like that. Yeah, it, it's a different culture too. Uh. But the things that I see on the internet every day, compared to my physical life, are just wow. No, it's, it's dog eat dog cutthroat world over here, man. That's what I keep hearing, but wow, that's my home. I got mine. Fuck y'all. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'd rather do the whatever I'm doing thing. I mean, as far as that goes, but Cert got me going on the plants because you know, yeah, it's brought a lot. Yeah, it's brought me a lot of smiles to it. Yeah. Give people something that they like, and then hear the story the next day about what they made out of it, which I don't really pay attention to. You know, I just know they're talking about the vegetables, but yeah. you know, salad, something, and uh, yeah, well, no. But their excitement makes me feel good. So, yeah, repeating the story isn't half as important as living through it. You know, I'm only doing right. it because we're on the radio. I right. Thought it was a jibber jabber about. Are you finished? I hope so. <laughs> hey, Larry. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be so hard. Man. <laughs> Take it out of the box, man. No, I was just going to ask Larry. Uh, Larry, you said you were in a meeting before the show. I was just curious. Is that something uh, to do with the project or something else? Or does uh, it, yeah. does it matter? Or? Yeah, well, it had to do with the project. Uh, we also had a meeting yesterday with the uh, design engineer. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, the, the project engineer. Right. And uh, there's nothing that we can do right now, which is really a good thing. Uh, with, with the lockdown, he can't even get to from island to island to, to oh, wow. make their decisions. So until until that's over with, we're dead in the water. However, well, just wait till the election. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah it, I mean, it, it, um, it. The end of the year will will open everything up. On yeah, yeah. So that's that's yeah. a good thing because now that we've got. Uh, have I told you about Big Boy? Big Boy. Yeah. The, the twelve. The, the twelve circuit. Thing? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a new huge coil. Oh, yeah, the amp coil. The, the high quotes? Okay. Do oh, that. What? The booster coil. Yeah, the yeah. booster coil. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you talk about that, the big boy. Big boy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're calling it big boy now because it is blowing our socks off. <laughs> uh, that is... Uh, that's made it where we can now do a complete underground system. Oh. No no overhead at all. Oh, cool. Yeah, uh, and that's kind of what they were looking for on the, on the big project. Uh-huh. So we can do that now, and uh, we, we found out that it's straight delta over there. Uh, some places they use a grounded B when the ground is necessary. Other places they generate it. We will teach them how to generate it everywhere. Okay, uh, stop. Uh, explain for me and everyone else what's delta and uh, what was the other thing you said, B? Grounded B. Grounded B and delta and, and what's all that? Uh, that's a transformer configuration that supplies a specific voltage. Okay. Uh, and um, big industry uses over here uses 220 and 440. Right. Okay. Some industry over here uses 100 and 110, 208, and 277. Yeah. So, we, we sort of, I've got drawings for both. Okay. There's a ways to hook it up. Uh, but, that, the last set of numbers I gave you, the, the 120, uh-huh. 277, that's a Y transformer that is grounded. The center tap of that is grounded. Okay. So that that's a, a different thing, so that you can, so that we can get the 110 lights that we use over here that are so expensive to use. All right. Um, yeah, power company gets more money. But yeah. Over there, over there, they use a delta which is a simple equilateral triangle and each phase, each leg is 120 degrees out of phase. So that means okay. that make that makes things rotate. Okay. You gotta go 120 degrees before you start the next phase of it. Right. Uh, okay. And that gives you 220, 440, and uh, uh, bu- 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 480, I believe. I'm not real sure on the Europeans. Uh, there's there's a few numbers different than ours, and I have no idea what it is. I haven't got that learned yet. Yeah. Uh, but any, that's close. But anyway, uh, we've, we've got all that information now, and that makes the vast majority of our drawings uh, good because we don't have to use the Y drawings. Okay. Uh, we've cleaned up all of the other drawings. I'm going back through, and the ones that have a bunch of wires shown on the, on the wiring diagram that jump on another, I'm looking at ways to to draw those so that the wires don't cross. So there's no way anybody can get confused. Yeah. Uh, just to simplify the drawing. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, four new ways to wire the big boy, and I've got six more to draw out. Uh, so we're we're coming right along. Uh, this new big coil can be a transformer. This new big coil can be a huge supercapacitor. Uh, uh, we're, we're 
right at the point that if we have a bank of these and a large enough distribution system, and enough light poles and houses and businesses on the on the grid, on our grid, that if we can take a lightning strike and distribute that balance, that load, that big surge back out through the entire system and store it in these big capacitors to sell to the power companies. Right. That sounds very interesting. I think we're, I think, as far as the drawings go, I think we're pretty well set. What yeah. the meeting today was about, just a second, I had to cough there. Yeah. What the meeting Ooh. today was about, uh, yeah, and you got to cough to get off. Uh, what, uh, I've had a wish list of, of test equipment. And right. it runs about three hundred thousand uh-huh. dollars, and we were going over their wish list and adding things on my wish list to it, and uh, it looks like we're going to be close to half a million dollars worth of test equipment when this is done with. Sweet. So, we, we what what we're going through all this crap about is they want a budget. Uh Uh-huh. And we're trying to figure out how much it's going to cost to buy just the equipment, how much material's going to cost, blah, blah, garbage. Right. Uh, Yeah, all the details. Yeah, all all the stuff that I hate to do, that's why I don't manage my own business. Right. I've tried that, and they don't work for me. I hear you. Yep. A lot to be said for a good business manager. Uh, yes, really. Uh, and they're hard to come by for an honest one. Yeah, <coughs> true. <coughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what? Are you, are you interested in the job? Me? Oh, no, no, no. I was being sarcastical. Shit. <laughs> I'm retired, Larry. I don't... I don't I just, I'm under contract now. I do yard work and <laughs> make sure we don't run out of milk and coffee. Yep. So oh. That's, uh, how, you know, it's like being... So many responsibilities. Life. I'm telling you, man, life is good. Life is good. Yeah. Lucky to I like to be just responsible for me. Well, you know, that's the problem with getting married is you, you're not. It's, there's two of you boneheads now. <laughs> Have fun with that. Because <laughs> life is a roller coaster. You know, unless you're like a boring, dull, mundane lump of blah, and you have nothing, you know, nothing to argue about. I think we all do. So yeah. life is like that. And I'm just one of those people that likes to ride the storm. <laughs> <laughs> Always pushing the envelope. Well, especially with, te- well, with ideas like the ones that uh, we discussed here. Yeah. Electricity being delivered to us on a, a frequency that's bad for your human health. And the people doing it know it. So, wait a minute. I mean, all these lies all my life, over and over and over, that seem to have uh, calmed and convinced others, it just pissed me the fuck off. I'm willing yeah. to die for convenience. Well, yeah, it's it's easier for us to say that too because we've been there and back. You know, think about the young people that some of these kids are so. I don't know. I guess we were we were the same in our in our day, just in a different way. They used to have to make us join the military to shoot people. Now they arm seventeen year olds and they do it in the street. Yep. So I'm and in a military fashion, this whole thing seems to me. I mean, why are you walking down a street armed? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Ooh, somebody got a important phone call. <laughs> so like, quick finger on the mute button too. <laughs> on of guns myself. 
But I'm not fond of telling other people what to do or play with. But when shit goes that badly, I mean, fuck. Yeah. It's almost as, it's almost as though it was planned that way. Yeah. Almost like somebody was funding it. Hmm. And all the players in it were playing a certain position in it to make it appear like it was real. Well, I like to say orchestrated. Well, all right. When you break it's, it down, it's look, the, we're all going to sound like... It's this. orchestrated. It's not like somebody's uh, actually telling each group this or that or the other thing, but they had a nudge here, a few hundred thousand dollars there. You know, a million here, a million there. You know, you can do just about anything you want to do. You got the money. Yep. But of all the things to want to do at the age of 17 and the time we're in, and this... Well, I blame, I blame parents for that. I mean, that's just... Well, no, uh, 17, come on. Now, you're, you're your yeah. own man at 17. Well, no, I, I, he, he has to take responsibility, but I blame his parents for the outcome. Because I don't know what the outcome is. Well, the, the outcome of him, of him. They, they raised a, a man that uh, felt the need to go down and do what he did. Wow, and at and, such a young age, too. Yeah. That's frightening. Wow. You know. Because he knows know right, right from wrong. And there's a lot of people that are little argue on his side, saying, you know, he was there with the militia. He was there to help people. He had a medic kit. He was there to protect property and and to uh, help people that got hurt. Yeah, his mama drove in there. It's like, yeah, I mean, I'm actually arguing this girl's uh, position on this side. Um, so, yeah. Because <laughs> we kind of disagreed about this. And, you know, we don't disagree about a whole lot, but. You know, because I, I think, okay, if you look at the circumstances um, in a purely uh, you take it, you take the mode and mode emotion out of it, and for, and, 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 well, because you get it's the way law is done. <laughs> You have, to, you have to take, you know, you have to, you have to take just the facts, just the facts, man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> boy, you're funny tonight, man. <laughs> just the facts, nothing but the facts. Well, wow, that's you, that's what it's. It's an ad, no, it's an admiralty court, and they're they're all fucking you in the ass, all three of them together, and they just don't tell you that part. You're, you're the you're the, uh, the straw man. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with you. So, okay. no. Well. I, okay. I disagree with the whole concept of how the law is operated. Well, right? yes. I, I mean, that's a whole another thing. Then I, okay. Well, I'm against the, the idea of enforcing your okay. fucking will on me. Fuck off. And that includes if they tried to tell me I had to carry a, a pistol. I would just be right. pissed off if they told me I couldn't carry one if, in fact, I give a shit. I well, the know. bottom line comes down to is did the kid have the right to be there? And the okay. bottom line is, yeah, he had a right to be there. He had a right to be armed. He had a, he had a right to defend property. I don't, I don't trust 17-year-olds with fucking arms. Are you insane? That doesn't you matter what she says. Yeah, well, exactly. It's if you can join the military and go shoot down people in the Middle East, why can't you do it here in uh, in uh, wow. Portland? Wow, I was wow. in Nome at eighteen. Yeah, I wasn't, I and that's wasn't that's what I was trying to get about. You can uh, trying to uh, remove when you remove all of the um, extraneous bullshit. Okay, and you come down to facts, the guy was there. He had his rifle. He had a med kit. He, his stated purpose for being there was to help people and to protect property. That was the, the malicious whole deal. 
the only reason they were there is there was because there was a, a horde of people out there rioting and destroying property and hurting people. Okay. He went there. He went there with a sense of of duty in his mind, right or wrong, whatever you want to call it. He went there with a sense of duty to and service to others. He was there to help people and protect property. And so, and did he or, or not? Well, that that's a matter of debate. <laughs> no, um, not. Did he the actually? Did was he protected or property was not protected? Well, those those three those three people. Well, okay. Well, here those three people won't be destroying any property. So <laughs> yes, the property was protected. It's perspective, then, right? It's sure. Being a smart ass. Too. I know. Well, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. And I'm um, trying to lighten it up because I you know. know well, I'm the funny guy, man. <laughs> yeah, I but take, I can't take all the serious. It makes my head hurt. Oh uh, well, you know. But, well, yeah. okay, but see, what I'm, I, my only concern in this whole equation is the is the age of the kid, and then you've got gun laws that restrict age for kids. Yet here we have a kid armed on the street. In what? Wait a minute. There either is or there is not. It, it well, that's yeah. That's an issue by itself. Uh, whether um, wow, how could this? Whether be? it was legal for him to to be armed on the street. That's and if it was illegal, which it hasn't been brought up, so I'm suspecting that it's not in that state. Uh, how for seventy. You really don't even know what hole you're peeing out of. I mean, uh, on, if you had a medical terms, you couldn't. There are laws against selling to minors, it's um, bad. but possession possession is is a different issue. I mean, I agree with you. The kids shouldn't have never been there. I said that from the get go. The kids shouldn't have been there, and I blame the parents. I blame the parents for that. His mom drove him there. You know, so. He's he's in, it's, it it's in the family, so yeah. So I mean, I blame you know that's that's his environment that he was in. That's that's what made him what he was, and that's why I say everything that people do, you can you can tie it back to their to their parents and their upbringing. And uh, shit, things that I did, my parents never uh, helped me do them. They never encouraged me to do them. They were against me doing them. So I went into doing my bad things, whatever they were, right. and no full knowing. Hey, my parents told me this isn't a good idea, but you know what? Sometimes you think shit like that when you're a teenager, so, right? And so. then actually, if you survive it, you grow out of it. But this yeah. kid was doing something that to me was just totally insane for a seventeen-year-old. Seventeen-year-old should be out trying to get laid. Uh, oh yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, he had no business being there at all. And, I, and again, I blame the parents for that because that's what the parents were into. That's that's what they brought that kid up into, and and, yeah, and okay. had been training him. I mean, the kid the kid was a the kid was a, a, a cadet. I mean, he was all into police, and he wanted to be a, you know that was his thing. He wants to be a cop. And his life, yeah, well, his life is probably over then. By at this point, no, no. I don't see a big future for the United States. I mean, well, that's well, okay. In a general sense, that goes for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I mean, this we're all we're all facing that dilemma. Right. They're pushing for the global reset so they can, you know, instead of explaining the dollar crash, let's have a virus. And here we are. Well, that was, that that was planned. with an election. And, yeah, but see, all the props to make society appear real to the voter. All these things are being done on purpose the way they're being done. There's nothing just happens. Well, no. Nothing. No. Well, explain that to these yo-yos that think if you vote for this idiot or that idiot, either hand, there's going to be a change. There isn't. It's the same crap year after fucking year. It has been ever since I was a child. I don't know what planet these voter people live on. I smell what you're stepping in there, brother. What? I smell what you're stepping in there. It's the same shit. Yeah, it's and I'll tell these, I, they don't talk to me about politics in English here. 
because they know what I think. So it's like, instead of uh, me learning Danish so I can fight in a bar, we just don't talk about shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not like they don't know. It's just they don't want to hear. It's like, no, 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 we don't. You're like in school. No, we're trying to drink and have fun, not, not argue about nothing. So they only ask me certain things, and then when you don't get asked again, then you know, oh, they didn't like the answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, if somebody, w if you, you are asked a question, and you're a representative of a foreign government, and you're on their soil, and you're not speaking their language, they kind of got a little bit of a hand on the thing, you know? So, right. I, yeah, well, but they don't, they don't wield their, uh, their acts of power on me in a social setting. But then again, I don't push my American system on them. So, yeah. Live and let live. Exactly. Well, yeah. It's not as hard to do as it sounds. No. It really is. I mean, I hate, I hate an asshole just as much as the next guy does. And some of those people think I'm the one that's the asshole. Okay, that's fine. You know, that, that it's, doesn't matter in the end. The only thing that matters is what you're doing physically surrounded, you know, with your surroundings. And the rest of this stuff, all these ideas and stories we hear about faraway places is uh, time filler. Or it's designed to control the way that you see the world for a reason. Right. Doesn't seem to work on Larry. That fucking Larry, man. He fuck you. I don't wear a mask. <laughs> no, it don't work on me. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was I was yakky, so I thought you might want to talk a little bit, Larry. Well, I'm I'm not even politically correct. I'm too old to remember all that shit. I I. I think when you're an old man like me, you can get away with saying what you think rather than what you think will make people happy. Right. And yeah, I yeah, just I'm don't not do there that yet, anymore. Though. Yeah, they do here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm still, I'm, we're still bopping around in that 40, in the 40 and 30 year olds group. You know, they're, they treat me like a peer instead of an old man. Yeah, when I smile at somebody and say nice to nice to see you again, I mean it. Yeah, because you're still here, fucker. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. You can't do that if you're not here. <laughs> so my advice to you, sir, is to take care of Larry. Well, I I do good with me. Yeah, because who else could? You know, it's like oh well, well sir takes care of this and that and the other thing, but. I'm the one that I'm taking care of me, the me inside that, you know, nobody else even knows. Right. Well, I you know, I experiment, out of again. I experiment with mental ideas when, you know, it's bedtime and you try to go to sleep so you don't spend a lot of time thinking about going to sleep. I found a, a way to do that years ago, and it's kind of, it sounds goofy to talk about it, but... When I close my eyes, there's still colors and shapes and things. There's not like a black or anything. I still have vision of something. I don't know how to explain what it is. I get the same thing. When, okay, well, when I concentrate on it, I fall asleep immediately, and the next thing I know, I'm waking up. Same. I never have one, uh, sleeplessness or none of that. It, and same. it doesn't... And, but, but daylight or too much daylight here in Denmark in the summertime, that does affect it. Yeah, because you get that what red glow. I don't know what it is, but you know, yeah, that interference. Yeah, that? you can see oh, it. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah, I, do exactly, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Wow. And I'm, hey, yeah, you see patterns, you see patterns and dots and... It, shapes. It's it shapes and it's moving and it changes and I've was, progressed into seeing color lately. Oh, I see color all the time. Yeah, but I didn't use it. It was like a gray dark, uh, but not. Yeah, and now the last couple of weeks I've been noticing that when I remember it, oh wow, there was some vivid color in that. Yeah. Where did that come from? 
And so I, if I, you I, if you I, take I, take and press on your eyes, you can you can enhance that effect too. Oh no no! I've got such I've got um, cornea damage. They're they're dented, so it gives me a. a Stigmatism, and I'm nearsighted. I can't. I see like yeah. a fucking dog. It's just embarrassing. Uh, a pair well, of I'm not talking about poking you. I'm just talking about just the putting. Right. You know, I'm just so touch. sensitive in the eye department. I don't know. I don't want. To, I don't even like to rub my eyes. Even no pastel. Oh yeah, if it's that bad. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh yeah, my. It's it's like a. You wouldn't know unless I told you. It's just one of those weirdo things about a person. You, everybody's got their little weakness. Right. Mine happened to be my eyes. But correctable with, um, you know, I, there are ways to fix it. There's a, uh, what's that drug called? Uh, well, it's not a drug. It's a natural, and I can't remember it. It's uh, saffron. Yeah. Okay. And I read, I read a report that claimed that if you take uh, 20 milligram tablets of saffron for 60 days, that you'll get health benefits in your vision. But I haven't been able to find a, an affordable source of the product to give it a whirl. Saffron is expensive. Uh, but. Exactly, but see, the reason for it... <laughs> The system doesn't want us to have things that is good for us, Rob. That's yeah, it's, we it's crazy. It's like uh, twenty-five dollars for three little sprigs of saffron. Yeah. It's great. No, I do. I'm, I looked it up. I was looking to. Make, yeah, uh, and they come I mean, in. They come the in little. Drugs. Look at what the war on drugs did. The price of weed. Oh yeah. Because when I was first young smoking it... Yeah, it was $10 right lid was an ounce. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it was right after Nixon started his war on drugs. Yeah. But it didn't really take effect financially for about four or five years. Yeah. And then... Yeah. Right, now look yeah, it rolled in. Yeah. Wow. Now it's up to so, two, three, four hundred bucks an ounce. Yeah, and it's against the law to... Do any kind of gardening in some places? I mean, what? <laughs> yeah. Gardening? You can't... Mm. And then, you know, it's called a weed for a reason. Damn, this sir was going fast. We done? Oh. No, no it's, no, it's too... We got 23 minutes left, but... Well, then I got a question for you. Are you, are you in terror of the state yet? I've always been in terror of the state. Okay, how do you mean it? Since I, I, since I, well, specifically can't. the face of the state, which is the law, the cops. Yeah. And I, and I think everybody is. I mean, show me one person, uh, well, there are, I know there are a few, but show me one average everyday person that if a cop gets behind them, they don't feel terror. Oh, Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I saw a horrible police video the other day. It might have been yesterday. And, uh, oh, well, it ends with one cop getting murdered and the other one just getting shot. Yeah. And they pull over this guy and, they, and he's just resistant and asshole from the whole beginning of the stop, right? But they're cops. Who would expect this punk to be nice to anyway? They're spraying him and all this other shit, and they end up dragging him out of the car. He's got a gun under the front seat. He grabs, he grabs it on his way out the car and shoots them both. Yeah. They never even had a chance to respond to that. But they're... they're yeah, they're, they're making a wide turn. They're macing him, and they're doing all this... How, where do you draw the line with this guy was defending himself? Well... You know, I mean, I don't know, because... If they weren't so fucking violent, maybe they wouldn't have got shot. Well, if if they weren't uh, um, doing something that uh, is morally wrong for 99% of the rest of the population to do, um, it never would have been an issue. They pulled the guy over for making a, a turn a little wide that could be an indication of intoxication. That's why he got pulled over. 
So you saw the same tape then? Yeah, I saw it. And he had an expired tag. So he got pulled over for failing to pay tribute to the state and for uh, making uh, a wide turn that some moron could construe as being drunk. Which, right. uh, once again, if you come... Like that stuff, Rob. And, and it comes back to that, like I was saying before, if there's no victim... There's no crime. If you're not hurting anybody or causing harm or damage or theft, then uh, you haven't committed a crime. So everything else is an infraction against the decree of the state. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so basically it's, it's this group of guys over here telling me I can't do that. And so that's, that's, that's what he did wrong is he, he defied a decree. Yeah. Uh, in their eyes, anyways. Yeah, but see, when he wouldn't uh, cooperate with their every fucking little word, well, he kind of went a little further with it, but he wasn't compliant at all in the first place. Mm-hmm. But they were immediately yeah, but, violent with him. Instead of, there was no attempt to not make that violent. Well, yeah, if they hadn't instigated it in the first place, there never would have been any violence. You have to take it. it was, it, yeah, it was obvious to me when he was fucking around with the paperwork, like in the first ten seconds of that. that well, he's hiding. He's nervous. He's afraid. Probably doesn't want to go to jail. I could see all that just on the way he was behaving. Right. So the cops, they had to. They're trained to see this, and they both get shot because they're incompetent fucking cowards. Right. Well, so many different ways. They couldn't even drag this guy out of his car after spraying him with mace and tasering him. They still couldn't get him out. And he only came out because he had a gun. Right. So, wow. Well, how, and now, I suppose, I, I feel like this. I'm watching this in Denmark. I'm supposed to feel sorry for these two cops. That's the reason that I was shown that video. Yeah, that's the light that it's portrayed in, yeah. Oh, I don't. I think that if the cops weren't such cunts, that would have never happened. There was yeah. other ways to deal with it to get that guy to, to cooperate, but the police... Yeah, they, they could have just minded their own business and left the guy alone, and everything would have been cool. Yeah, but there's no money in leaving people alone. So, fuck them. So they need that revenue. And see, they're, they're revenuers. They're out revenuing. And, uh, you know, hey, I don't feel bad for them. Oh, not a bit. Me neither. And I'm saying, and I can see the portrayal of the video to my, you know, what they're trying to appeal to me with. Oh, yeah. And still... And Who these brave, brave officers putting their lives on the line. Yeah, no, I saw two bullies... To steal money from people. <laughs> better, not, yeah, but they met a better thief and a better bully. And he got them both. Yeah. Well, well you know, that message... Because I'm not... Uh, what do you call it? Like a voter thinker. I don't, I'm don't. i not for this police state shit. Right. I'm for freedom. I'm for right, I'm freedom. For right and wrong. And uh, right, right is... Uh, freedom means doing what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody else. And sometimes uh, you can't really... Okay, you but you could be blamed for hurting somebody, but you didn't do anything more than speak your mind or say something cruel at the moment, right? And words get the same response out of people as punching them in the fucking face. Right. I mean, Christ, I'm five foot four. I used to have to hit people... To get the kind of response out of them that I get out of calling a nigger a nigger. Because you can't say that anymore. Well, fuck you, I can't. You can tell I'm me just what did. I can say. <laughs> Stupid. It don't matter what color you are, a nigger is still a nigger. That what, you know what? That's what I mean, Larry. We're from the day where people understood words in a different context. Yeah, they it raced up. It up in the, yeah, they raced it up in the 1960s so that... They could use it as a tool, a weapon. It's a fucking word, people. Carlin warned us all about this. <laughs> nobody fucking... Nobody lived. They thought he was kidding. And he wasn't making comedy shows. He was doing documentaries on how to... 
deal with government and society. Exactly. That's why they put him down when they did. He should be alive still. He was a healthy fucking 75. Yep. Duh. But no tears for slain swine. <laughs> uh oh. Well, his wife dying. I always felt that that put the uh, put the depression into him and set him loose on society because he got really mean afterwards and started coming out with what people were thinking were comedy routines and it sounded like to me was, hey, he's describing the Senate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But well, I, got, are. I got no sympathy for him because when you work for an evil institution, you are by default evil. Well, what about when you were working for that evil institution? Because I've worked for it. I didn't really know it, but I did. Hindsight shows me I did. Because of the companies that... Yeah, are well, I was in the Air Force. So, yeah. I worked for uh, the industrial industry. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was a medic. And so I wasn't on that end of it. But, yeah. Um, but... Uh, I actually didn't go into the Air Force by choice. Oh, they drafted your happy ass. You never mm, mentioned that. Before. No, it wasn't a draft. Oh, oh, was, oh, okay, it was a deal. I was given a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so was yeah. I, Rob. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got, we got some bad boys here, man. <laughs> it, it, and my shame is, is I couldn't, I wasn't bad enough to get into any of the four military branches. None of them wanted me. went, wait a minute. <laughs> but I'm, I'm a rather handsome fellow, and I'm fun at parties. And they said, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll, and all I said is, well, I'm not willing to kill anybody. <laughs> I was actually <laughs> supposed to go into intelligence. Um, <laughs> In the military. <laughs> I was supposed to be there for a joke. I actually was, was slotted to go in as Air Force Intelligence. And a mix-up in the folders at my entrance thing when I went in uh, switched me over to Medic. I had, the wrong color, oh. I had the wrong color folder, and I ended up in the Medic line. <laughs> to make a long story short. <laughs> the military's color-coded for the slower ones. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> uh, yep, I had a red wow, color. It's a, good thing. it's a good thing there's only three colors on an American flag. <laughs> <or> the average <laughs> American who couldn't remember the fucking colors. <laughs> I am terribly upset. we got to write it down. Well, I'm telling you, I am terribly upset with my peers back in the homeland. Ooh. Boy, I've been gone nine years, and this is what you guys do to my country. <laughs> What the fuck? Who was driving this thing? <laughs> what me? Hey, so to be really honest, Rob, I don't take any of this country shit seriously. I like to make jokes about it because yeah, I know. to me, it is funny. Well, no, it's all a fucking joke. <laughs> all of a sudden, think that I was going to be a Trump supporter so Biden doesn't get the White House. <laughs> 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 like, like. What difference does I don't care if Pinocchio gets the White House? Okay, you don't even have to. You don't have to be a Trump supporter to know and understand. That there's no fucking way Biden can ever fucking be president. <laughs> it's great. To, it's the best. Oh man! And if, and, and if he does, that just tells you where we're at. But next to the COVID, the the election. <laughs> that's the second. The hoax is on, people. There's no country left. They just, they slit their own fucking financial throat. And they're claiming they're going to still continue forward. Where? What, what's left for Trump to fuck up? <laughs> I don't see it. I think he's done good enough. See ya. But Joe Biden? <laughs> Wait a minute. That, that's not necessarily better. <laughs> what a, it's like, like a problem. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's funny to me because I don't live there. If I lived there, I don't think I'd be laughing. If I lived there, I think I'd be out in the streets with guns shooting people. Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just, oh, depends, yeah. just depends where you're at. 
I would, well, I'd pick a place that was fucking hot and then go to it and I'd shoot people. If that was the podcast, why not? That'd be a wild fucking life, man. I uh, wouldn't be, want to be married to Cirque and living in America right now. No. You know? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Because if, if I was, I, what would I be doing there? I'd have to be insane to be there in the first place. Right. And I knew that, I knew that when I was in Scotland, but I didn't know I knew it. It just was like, well, I don't really want to go home. Where am I going to go here? <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've thought about it for a long, long time, man. And uh, for me, it's, it's a one-way trip. I mean, if I ever do make that step, there's no You'd coming back. i glad you did. Yeah, I probably would be. Yeah. It's just a big step, and... Uh, it's a matter of freedom, and, and freedom is in your mind. So and right uh, now, I'm I'm too comfortable where I'm at. Ah, so you got to convince your mind and your body to do to be in the same place at the same time, and sometimes they're in conflict. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I've been through it. Yeah, I might go through it now and not recognize it because I'm so settled and comfortable. But I spent a lot of years as a traveler. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed this. Boy, you couldn't stop me from going places. And now you, they can't get me out of the house. <laughs> Terrible. Mm. So. But if uh, I anyway. get this coral manufacturing at a speed to where we can start doing something with it, I will probably well, do that. Right now, with the three. lockdown thing bullshit, you're going to just... It's, you gotta yeah, we're that. talking It'll next year. But, uh, yeah, three more months. Yeah, at least. Oh, well, so. next week I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a solo um, in a perfect world show. And on my birthday night, so on my birthday, on the, the premise of the show is going to be, I'm going to take over the world and tell you how things should be. <laughs> that might be fun. That sounds fun, yeah. I just okay. thought of it, so I thought I'd interrupt you and let him let him all know. Are you providing the champagne? Fuck yeah! All you can drink, sport. Okay. I'll be there. You just put it on the RLM tab, and Absolutely. my attorneys will see it gets paid someday. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I I live on credit, according yeah. to the monetary system. So as far as I'm concerned, this whole fucking money thing is a big joke. You know, you're trying to get me to be all bummed out and upset with it. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. All right. Well, so, there's people, uh, hey, there's people that are wanting a stimulus check from the government. Yeah, well, yeah. Another one. They just got <laughs> one. They want another one. <laughs> <laughs> an addiction. You're yeah. addicted to imaginary money. It's fake money in the first place. Yeah. They Subject. To reset. You watch. They're going to reset it. And you're going to need a card to use. And if you don't have a card, you better get a card. Yes. Yeah. Cash will not exist in the near future. Yeah. So, Larry, I'm worried. Yeah. Change the subject. Larry, uh, oh, okay. you talked about, we talked about the uh, project meeting that you ran earlier, uh, but we never talked about your Monday meeting. Was there anything exciting happening there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I asked in the Monday meeting if there would be a place to, to if if other people could manufacture coils, uh -huh. uh, other than the the people that were building for them, right? Uh, and they said, yeah. Uh, so once we get going. Uh, We we'll put you through the school, and yeah. then once you once you pass the course, you'll be certified to make the coils, uh -huh. and then all you got to do is train your crew and do inspection. If they if they're not right, we don't buy them. Well, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. Well, that's really good news. So, yeah, yeah, I. I've, I've, Make sure and, and ask about that. I'm glad you brought it up. I was, yeah, yeah. You were thinking about us. Yes. Awesome. 
that's exactly well, what I need uh, is uh, to, to have that ability okay. or we, available. We got we got to thinking about it, and if if we have a village of a thousand homes, mm -hmm. then that's six thousand coils that we'll need. Right. And if we, like, go to these people that just now opened up their business and just now learned how to, to what, wrap them and mm -hmm. just now found out and... Yeah, okay, now, now, now crank out 6,000 coils. <laughs> yeah, now, now give me 6,000 coils and you're the one that's holding the job back. Yep. We're waiting so, on y'all. Get, get ready. Yeah, so... <laughs> There's going to be plenty to go around, and once that. Well, the goes, need the need for the manufacturing is 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 going to grow exponentially anyway. Oh, absolutely. Once once you have the proof of concept down, and this thing takes off, you ain't going to be able to keep up with it, and you're you're going to have somebody's going to have to eventually invest in the tooling and everything to automate oh, yeah. this shit. So. Oh yeah, we've already got plans for that. So that yeah, you should have that. We'll, in, we'll in, be selling franchises before long. Okay. So, you know, just depends on what parts you want. And, okay, so say you say you make the switching coil because only you can only make one coil and then somebody else makes a different one. Right. So it's it's going to be in departmentalized. Right. But... Once you get that, we're we're light years ahead now of everything else, and we're developing new coils all the time. Right. So initially, we're going to say, "Look, this is this is our next product for you. Uh -huh. if you want to make it, and then you just make the make the switching coil that you're already making, plus make this one." Yeah, just add another product line on. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's going to be it, it's all component. Uh, everything yeah, is going to be. Yeah, we've been over that. Yeah, yeah. military yeah, grade connections and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just the military grade connection sticking out of a piece of plastic. Right. So it, we're ready for it. And just a socket on it. Yeah. But yeah. this this time that that we've got to wait until the lockdown's over with is just going to give us more time to come up with more ways that these things can be used. Oh yeah, well you're just you're coming up with new shit every week. It's amazing. Well, we're we're working every day. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, that's obvious. So. Have you uh, done any more tests on that three phase thing? Anything new there? Uh, nothing to report. Uh, that particular coil that he got with it uh, is putting out thirty to one instead of ten to one. Oh wow! Uh, so it, it's increasing the amperage thirty times more than what the wire is rated for. So on a uh, three amp circuits, you get ninety amps. No, you get nine hundred on three amps. Oh, well, on three amps, yeah, on three amps will give you ninety. Yeah, but but thirty amps are thirty amps. Nine. Yeah, if you're pumping the, if you're pushing thirty amps, you're gonna get nine hundred out of the out of the yeah. back, out of the back. Mm -hmm. and it'll. Uh, it, 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 you can push 30 amps to 22 gauge wire with this system. Damn. So 900 amps out of a, yeah. uh, these new coils. Yeah. It just gets more exciting all the time, man. And we're, we're, we're working on it. We're developing right. new things. We're, we're looking at new products. We've already gone past motorcycles and are into cars. Uh, no capacitor systems. We we just eliminated with this new big boy coil. 
we just eliminated 340 pounds of capacitor out of an electric car, as well as the battery bank. Damn. Yeah, because that'll just straight up run it. Yeah. Yeah, that's over 1,300 pounds out of the car weight-wise to start with. Yeah. And that, can do that's, that with planes. Yeah, and boats. Yeah, and definitely boats. Right. Well, our time is up. Wow. It is on the money. Three o'clock on the money. So, all we're welcome. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's been a good show. Thanks for thanks for being here. Thanks everybody for listening. And uh, we'll bring you more next week.